I think you're now more awake to. The climate hoax is one that... The environmentalists do often lie. Ah, Bill Maher, you just couldn't smoke before or after the interview. And to start lecturing a pregnant Candace Owens on climate change for the funniest irony I've seen in a long time. The 68-year-old 12 HBO special nine-figure net worth man instead demonstrates his non-belief in secondhand smoke. And Candace took the interview knowing this is what Club Random Podcast does and doesn't call him out or leave, so it, it is what it is. Steve-O's vegan and sober, how do you know, he'll tell ya. He requested a no-smoke podcast with Bill and had his invite torn up. So clearly, Grandpa Burns is at the F you, I'm old, I don't care stage of his life, even on camera. As the top comment in this thread states, he makes his usage a part of his identity to a sad degree, like Bert does with booze or his Aztec death laugh. <laughs> Did he really have to light up at that very moment? Or is it somewhat of a power play? As he suddenly found the courtesy to not smoke in front of Cheryl Crow. I can blame my... What's no, your I need to light it up so maybe I'll remember something. No. But uh, what were you gonna say about it? You, oh, you covered that. Typical Bill Maher living up to his reputation. I mean, Mike Tyson, who lives, breathes, and sells it, had the courtesy to not smoke with Steve-O on the show, as I'm sure the man has an endless cabinet of edibles to boot anyway. If Steve-O's that kind of extreme one-slip-up-and-it's-all-over sort of dude, then yeah, maybe avoid the interview, but things like smoking, drinking, gambling, I mean, you're bound to witness it amongst others, in ads, or out for dinner. A little self-control has to be a part of the plan at a certain point. Bill Burr perfectly nailed the issue with Bill Maher in one quote. Who am I, Bill? You're <laughs> I am who you need me to be, depending on what your <laughs> argument I, I, is. This is after Burr explained he had a hole in his roof and it took forever to fix. All as a setup for an analogy on government. And Ma gets mad that he's using a subjective experience and defends the government. Meanwhile, Bill Maher has spent literally years complaining about the government's slow solar rollout to his house and the requirement to build a shed to store it, no different than what Burr said at all. The guy just cannot help but move the goalpost, arguing with him is impossible for this exact reason, and it's why Bill Burr figured him out so quickly. Roseanne and the late Norm Macdonald also had some ribbing to give him for smugly suggesting atheism is the only way. I don't like when atheists say all that shit. Pisses me off too. I'm glad yeah, you said that. They don't that. know shit either. So you, you gotta stop hanging out in that hot tub with Bill Maher all the time. He gets a, it sounds like you got a god shaped hole in your heart. As Norm put perfectly, some comedians put appearing smart over being funny. He also roasted him in his set on stage here, and goes without saying, he's widely considered a much superior act to Maher. In the other Burr clip going viral again this week, Ma does his usual, oh no, political correctness and cancel culture, like to some extent it hasn't helped comedy. Political correctness may be ruining comedy. I haven't, I'm not experiencing it. I think it's like a half a dozen stories. They're trying to act like, you know, the, the sky is falling. It isn't. It's a right. fun time, come out to a comedy club. PC people were never going to enjoy most comedians, but canceling comedians in the news every day, plus the internet, has led to way more arena tour comedians and major network specials than there were in past decades ever. From perceptions online, smugness is a constant, a-hole is a key term. People say he claims to be on the left or libertarian while having many right views, but arguing the sides is a joke to me as I'm upside down. His anger shtick just doesn't land as well as a Bill Burr or a Patrice, and so much of his angle is just disagreeing to disagree without much haha -ha or insight to back it up. He feels more like a political commentator than a comedian. Reputation aside, the approach clearly works for maintaining solid numbers as they still pay this man 10 million a year and his audience demographic buy from and are used to watching long amounts of TV ads. And that high profile allows for the kind of guest list to move the algorithm to Club Random's favor in a short two years growing to 500,000 subs, even with, in my opinion, a terrible name. Going off the comment sections, not much is worse than his Bella Thorne interview, which was covered first by Red Bar. He complains everything is anxiety or trauma to Bella's generation, as she tries to relate to him with the gift of a joint. Bill, of course, didn't do any research on his guests, so she hits him with, oh, really? I wonder what would happen if you kids had to go through something really traumatic. Like, I mean, look at your life. Everybody wants it. I lost my dad when I was eight. I mm. was growing up. I. Well yeah, I, I went through shit. Can be an indulgence, yes, but not when your guest has been through that. But he's incapable of abandoning a point, even if it doesn't fit who he's speaking to. So off we go. Those are legitimate, real traumas. I, uh, yes, I'll give you that. 
But being with a therapist every day can also, yeah, I'll give you that. But but can also be a indulgence. From here, comedic genius Bill goes from zero raunchy jokes to many raunchy jokes in an attempt to comfort her. Then getting touchy, outright calling her hot, completely unprompted and unrelated to what she just said, it just continues to descend further and further into hell. You're, because you're a hot chick. Someone give it to me straight all right. day long, then... That's what you're here this. for at Club Random. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah Get it definitely. straight here. We yeah. no lube, we put it right in. <laughs> but, uh, what? Yes. The entire comment section drags it for being a mess. A cliche from last century clashes with a cliche from this century. Mixed in with the train wreck that is post to horn dog derailment. I mean, fourth guest ever, and it's just nuts how off the rails it was compared to Quinton, Shatner, Judd Apatow, where Bill's usual interrupting or getting overly hammered by the end of the podcast was the main complaint. From online perception, Mars just not celebrated like many of his peers for his stand up ability. Much like the internet's sentiment on Joe Rogan preferring his hosting ability to his stand-up. Ma has become a controversial political figure more than someone renowned for their material, I guess is probably the best way to put it. As opposed to the love Chappelle or Gervais get for their respective output, for example, which definitely lines up if you've heard Bill Ma talk before. Just like making Stan Lee's death about how much he hates other adults enjoying things. Yes, Marvel and DC is repetitive, formulaic, kids movies outside of a few that transcend their genre, but to make Stan Lee's death about yourself, all just to dunk on a few old nerds? Nailed it, Bill. Y you nailed it. He did the same thing with Steve Irwin and Bill Burr praised him for it, except South Park did it two weeks earlier, and their joke was much funnier as the actual Steve Irwin turned up and Satan had to ask him to leave for not wearing a costume. There's an actual joke structure there compared to what Ma did. It's hard to argue that his strategy to stay relevant isn't just old man yells at clouds. And uh, the funny is like a collateral thing. They want to be seen as smart. Uh, your friend Bill Maher, for instance. His show is the old model of media, so he had to announce that coming back to TV, with or without the writers, you know, those guys paid a million times less to come up with everything you hear every host say. Yet it was all for nothing anyway, as the writers did reach an agreement and returned when the show intended. Even then, Hollywood could still find a way to screw everybody, and even Bill could become an AI property in the future. If Hollywood truly want to AI generate Tom Cruise movies forever and think they can win the legal battles, who knows? This is all unprecedented territory, but funnily enough, the guy who doesn't care about the writer's strike could be next. Bill Maher can only say so much like anyone else on TV, which truly hinders the point of being a comedian in the first place. It's why Chappelle ran to Africa. Any creative that wants actual freedom sells to the fans and are cutting out the network. Maybe Bill Maher needs more than a Tyson gummy to change up a little, like, uh, maybe a whole toad? Until then, searching Bill's name really sums it all up. I used to love Bill Maher. He has turned into an a-hole with all due respect. His Club Random Podcast's YouTube show is insufferable. One of the things I love about Bill Maher is, uh, he's not really likable, and he doesn't seem to give a f and, you know... 